Good evening. We're back with another episode of the Lord of the Rings LCG Progression Series. And tonight is a card review of the Grey Havens expansion. So, let's take a look. The hero, first hero, is Sir Dan the Shipwright. Probably not the correct pronunciation, considering the accent mark, but Sir Dan the Shipwright, 12 threat, 4 2 2, 4 health. Spirit Hero. Noldor. Draw one additional card at the beginning of the resource phase. After drawing cards at the beginning of the resource phase, choose and discard one of those cards. That's a strong hero. First of all, four willpower, two attack, two shields. That's very strong stats. He does have high threat but he's got very strong stats. He's Noldor, that can matter. Now the draw one additional card at the beginning of the resource phase and then discard one of your, those cards. It is not discard a card, it is choose and discard one of those cards, one of the cards you drew. So you draw two and discard one of them every turn. Well, that's going to be mediocre when you're drawing two non-unique cards, or two cards that you actually have a use for. It's going to be phenomenal when you're drawing two cards and you don't have a use for one of them. So that's like, uh, King Under the Mountain does that, right? Well, King Under the Mountain draws two extra cards and discards one. This is like a miniature King Under the Mountain. This is a very strong hero. I like him a lot. Looking forward to playing him. He's a very strong hero. The stats alone are make him strong. The resort the ability is just a bonus. I'd play him for the stats alone. He's very good. And the, the ability is not bad in a lot of situations. It's very good with when you draw a duplicate or a unique card. It's going to really help you to limit the unique cards in your hand. Like I'll play quests where I got a ton of dead cards at the end of the game. And Sir Dan can really help with that. Very, very strong hero. He's going to go up there as a top three quester at least. Hard pressed to think of a better one that you don't have to attach cards to to make good. Well, except that he's 12 threat, that's the one caveat. Galdor of the Havens, 9 cost, 2 2 1, 9 threat, 2 2 1, 4 cost, or 4 health. Noldor, after drawing your setup hand, instead of taking a mulligan, you may discard any number of cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. If you have no cards in your hand, draw six cards once per game. Well, there's specific decks that he fits in pretty well. Well, let's talk about him piece by piece. First of all, his stats are not good. His threat's okay. His, so if you're playing him, you're playing him for his abilities. And what is... The ability to selectively mulligan worth. How often do you want to mulligan your hand because you're looking for something but you like some of the cards in your hand? Well typically in my experience that would happen when you're mulliganing because a large part of your hand is unwieldy because it's high cost or because it's doubles of unique cards. The other times when you're mulliganing is because you're looking for a specific card and the other cards in your and the cards in your current hand are just kind of okay but not great. In which case Galdor gives you the chance to keep some of those kind of okay cards, which isn't that good. I'm hard pressed to think of a situation where this 
ability is exceptional. But it's okay. It's hard to evaluate, but I'm gonna I would say this is an okay ability, but nothing exceptional. The action if you have no cards in your hand, draw six cards, that's not gonna come into play every game. Some because a lot of games it's you're hard it's you're hard pressed to empty out your hand due to having duplicates. So you would need to play him with a hero or or other cards that allow you to get rid of the du duplicates. He'd be good in like an Aristor deck. I'm thinking that might be his best case scenario. Because sometimes with an Aristor deck you're looking for a specific card but you do want to keep some of your like acceleration cards that allow you to clear out your deck so his best usage might be with Aristor. And Aristor often has zero cards in hand. Though not often with resources to spare. This, uh, the response part of this card is difficult to evaluate, but I'd say it's okay, but not exceptional. And the action, not applicable to every game, but in a deck where it makes sense, drawing six cards is pretty strong. Is it worth the mediocre stats? This would be a hero to mess around with. I, I don't know if I like him enough to really put him in a high-powered deck. So I'm open to the possibility that I'm very wrong about that because this is a very difficult ability to evaluate without playing it, I think. So it could be very good. could be fun. could be interesting. Sir Dan the Shipwright, I like her a lot. Galdor is tough to evaluate, but my feeling on him is that he's probably above average but not exceptional. Mythloaned Sea Watcher, 2 cost, 1 1 0. While the top card of your discard pile is an ally, Mythloaned Sea Watcher gets plus 2 attack and gains ranged. Well, when the top card of your discard pile is an ally, this is a good card. When it isn't, it's a little not good. It's understated when it doesn't have an ally on top. So I guess you need to reliably be able to place an ally on top of your discard pile and if you can do that and you're running tactics this is a pretty good card and I'd play it but if I couldn't do that then I wouldn't play it pretty simple to evaluate skyward volley as an additional cost to play skyward volley exhaust a ranged character you control that's a set strange way to play that, to word that why wouldn't the exhaust a ranged character you control be part of the combat auction Curious. Deal two damage to an enemy engaged with the player. Resolve that effect again for each copy of Skyward Volley currently in your discard pile. All right. Well, four damage, four direct damage for two. Cost is great. Two for two is kind of. Uh, it's okay, but there's a lot of allies you're going to want to play first. This is a, so this is clearly a card that builds slowly but gets better later in the game. And such cards are weak in solo play because solo play usually needs to get off to a strong start. So I'd say this is more of a multiplayer card than a solo card. Probably wouldn't run it in solo, but you never know. It may be a component of some deck out there. But because it gets off to a bit of a slow start in solo, probably wouldn't play it. Grappling Hook. Attached to a character. One cost. Discard Grappling Hook and exhausted, Exhaust Attached Character to commit Attached Character to the quest using its attack instead of its willpower. Or instead of its siege if the current quest has the siege keyword. Be great if you could use this on Bjorn, but of course you can't, because he can't have attachments. Uh, so would I play this if I was battle questing? This could help you to even out a deck that needs some questing, but mostly battling. 
I might play it in that deck to help out. I'm thinking of quests like Into Athelion, which are do some battle questing, but also force you to do normal questing, and the normal questing is such a struggle. Or alternately, sometimes the battle questing is such a struggle, and this card could help you even that out. So I'd probably play it in that circumstance. So I'll keep this card in mind for the future. I think that's its best usage. Or if you're running a very battle-focused hero, but you're struggling at times to come up with the willpower because you've run this battle-focused hero, you could run this card to help even that out a bit. Yeah, that's a good use for it. Warden of the Havens, 2 costs, 0, 1, 1, 3 health. While the top card of your discard pile is an attachment, Warden of the Havens gets plus 2 shields and gains Sentinel. Well, it's exactly the same assessment as Mithlon Sea Watcher. If you can reliably put an attachment on top of your discard pile, this is pretty good. And if you can't, it's understated. And I wouldn't run it. Same evaluation as Mithlon Sea Watcher. And it's hard to say if you'd reliably be able to do that. I have to probably play with cards and see, okay, I can do this reliably and then and Galdor would allow you to set that up, right? Because you may discard any number of hands. I assume you can control the order that you discard them in. So if you were running Mithlon, Sea Watcher, or Warden of the Havens, and Galdor, you could set it up right from the get-go the way you want it. So there's probably ways to make this card good, probably a lot of ways. And if you're running one of them, how would you run something specifically to make it good? I don't think it's that good. It's good, it's not like game women in combo good. It's more like if I was already running a way to do this, then I'll throw this card in there. Assuming I've got access to the leadership sphere. Anchor Watch, 2 cost. After an enemy is declared as an attacker against you, declare an exhausted character you control as the defender. Resolve that effect again for each copy of Anchor Watch currently in your discard pile. All chosen characters are defending against this attack. Well, I don't think the secondary usage is that good. Uh, whereas Skyward Volley is a card that's kind of met early but gets better later. I actually think this card is better early and then gets worse later. Because in a lot of quests early game, you have to use all your heroes to quest and then you end up taking an undefended attack. This could help with that, although early game you don't usually have two spare resources. So what is this card good for? Because early game, if you don't have the resources to play it, that, was, that would be when it's best. Late game, you usually have the options to defend the attacks you need to defend without too much cost to you. So I'm not sure there's a circumstance where this card is really good. Because it's tough to play early due to the cost, and it's not that good late. And all chosen characters defending against the attack, I don't think that's very useful most of the time. I don't think this card is very good. It would be good if it were cheaper to play it early. But it's tough to have two resources early. Though I suppose if you set it up, it could be good against a specific type of challenge if you drew it early. Mariner's Compass, one cost, attached to a leadership or a scout character. At the beginning of the travel phase, does that mean a leadership, a printed re leadership icon? Or could you use it on a Song of Kings character? Probably you could. I don't know why it has that caveat then, because, well, I guess 
you have to attach it to a leadership or scout character. Okay, well I guess that could be relevant somehow that I'm not thinking of. At the beginning of the travel phase, exhaust Mariner's Compass and attached character. Oh, well maybe that's why then. To search the top five cards of the encounter deck for a location. Switch that location with a location in the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. Okay, so basically you're shuffling a nasty location from the staging area back into the deck in exchange for a new one that's hopefully better and often will be because you can choose it sometimes won't be better if you get unlucky this is a card for a specific challenge that challenge being really nasty locations and if you're up against that challenge, then I think this is a good card. And if you're not, then it's kind of, uh, meh. If the locations aren't that bad, then it's meh. But if the locations are nasty, then this is a good card. And it's cheap. And I play it against that challenge for sure. Good card. Possibly even an essential card to have against certain challenges. Thinking of like nightmare decks, this could be an essential card. So we're looking at two really strong cards in this uh, expansion, Sir Dan the Shipwright and Mariner's Compass, and Galdor certainly worth a look. Above average, possibly good, I'm not really sure. But he's very interesting at least. Linden Navigator. 2 cost, 2 willpower, 1 attack, 1 shield, 2 health. Linden Navigator does not exhaust to commit to a quest and can commit to quests while exhausted. After resolving a quest to which Linden Navigator was committed, either discard it from play or discard one card from your hand. Well, if you have spare cards to discard, and often you will if you're playing lore, and this is a good card and I'd run it. Run three of it. It's also Noldor if that synergy comes into play. Not exhausting to commit to a quest built into a card with two willpower for two cost. That's excellent. If you can afford to play the forced effect, I don't think it's very good if you're discarding it after the first quest. First time you quest. I don't think it's good in that situation at all. But if you have the cards to discard from hand, this is a great card. So that probably means you likely won't early game. Well, that makes it a mid to late game card. And two cost for two willpower gets worse as the game goes along. Because you're not going to be starved for willpower as the game goes along. So it, I'd fi I find this similar to Anchor Watch. Its ideal usage isn't really that viable because of its high cost. You can't really afford to discard cards from your hand early, usually. And then late game, you're not going to care that much about being able to commit to the quest without exhausting. That's still okay. You could, but yeah, it's not that good at defending and it's not that good at attacking, so you won't get a huge amount of value out of that second action. It's okay. I don't think it's good early. Mid to late, it's okay. Late game, it gets worse as it goes along due to not scaling up. I'd, I'd rate it similar as Anchor Watch. Maybe a little better than Anchor Watch, but kind of similar in terms of its pattern of what it does. It's okay. Probably won't use it though, except maybe if Noldor synergies come into play, or Scout. The Evening Star, 2 cost, place 2 progress on any location. Resolve that effect again for each copy of the Evening Star currently in your discard pile. So that helps you deal with locations. Uh, Hmm, interesting. 
Well, two cost for two progress on any location is, well, as Falaf, you play for two cost, and you can put two progress on any location every single turn for the rest of the game. So a one-time use is not good for two cost. It's overshadowed. If you could do that twice, would it be good? Like the second play? The third play is probably overkill. I think there are some situations that you could make this work, but they're kind of hard to set up. By make this work, I mean make it good. They're not going to occur that often. I think this card will sit in your hand a lot because you don't have two resources to play it early game. All of these are going to suffer from that. Well, Skyward Volley, you might get value out of it early game if you needed to kill something badly. That situation wouldn't happen every game. So all of these, Skyward Volley, Anchor Watch, Evening Star, they're, they're slow cards. They're slow to ramp up. They do scale up well, not Anchor Watch really, but Skyward Volley and Evening Scar scale up well. It's hard to get full value out of them, I would say. You have to play them in a sequence, having played one of the others first, of course. I think they, they just kind of, they sound kind of janky to me, like frustrating. Difficult to get full value out of. That's the way it seems to me on paper. There are specific challenges though where this could be good. If you don't want to play Glorfindel and Asphaloth, and you needed to do two progress on a location very badly, then you would probably run this as an alternative to Glorfindel and Asphaloth. But I do think it's overshadowed by Asphaloth, which can do this effect every single turn for two cost. But it can't do two and two later in the game. Still though, I think you'll get more value out of Asphaloth than Evening Star. But if you don't want to run Glorfindel and you need to do this effect, I think this is a decent way to do it. Explorer's Almanac attached to a location in the staging area. Progress from questing successfully may be placed on the attached location before it's placed on the current quest. Oh, so three cards in this set are focused on giving you tools to deal with locations. Zero cost is great. There are plenty of locations that's a very good card against. Thinking of like four threat, or uh, not four threat, but high travel cost locations that you can just clear out using excess willpower. I like this card. It's not going to make sense against every quest, but there are. This is a good way to clear out some very difficult locations. This card with Mariner's Compass. Mariner's Compass allows you to avoid doing anything to the location at all, but you have to replace it with another one. Explorer's Almanac. You get rid of it. You would trigger any when explored effects. So that's when you might want Mariner's Compass more. If it wasn't like just a nasty travel effect, but a so you'd use this for nasty travel effects, you'd use Mariner's Compass for nasty when explored effects. Or just persistent effects in general. But if you're facing a nasty travel effect, I think that's a good card. Now would I rather have that or Mariner's Compass against the nasty travel effect? Depends on how much progress I'd have to place to clear it. 
If it was a low amount, I'd rather have Explorer's Almanac. Doesn't cost anything. You play it and you finish off the location for good, whereas Mariner's Compass forces you to replace it with another location. Potentially a location just as bad if you get unlucky. So if you're facing a bad travel effect but not a bad when explored effect, I like Explorer's Almanac a lot. But if you're facing a bad when explored effect or a high progress to clear location or a nasty persistent effect, I like Mariner's Compass. Sailor of Loon. Also, Mariner's Compass can clear something out right away the same turn it comes. Explorer's Almanac, you have to wait and play this at the next round. I don't know if that matters. It could for some locations. Sailor of Loon, 2 cost, 1, 1, 0, 2 health. While the top card of your discard pile is an event, Sailor of Loon gets plus 1 and gains cannot be damaged while committed to the quest. Well, I think this is worse than Warden of the Havens or Mythlone Sea Watcher. Not sure why it doesn't give you plus 2 willpower. I guess that would be too strong. As it is, this does not seem like a good card. There's plenty of 2 cost for 2 willpower allies now. And the benefit of cannot be damaged while committed to the quest isn't going to come up very often. So I, I really don't see myself playing this Sailor of Loon. I don't think it's good. Even with Noldor synergies. Unless the Noldor synergies are crazy. I don't think that's good. L-Wings Flight, 2 costs, quest action. Ready a questing character and give that character plus 1 willpower until the end of the phase. Resolve that effect again for each copy of L-Wings Flight currently in your discard pile so it's similar to the Evening Star or Skyward Volley or Anchor Watch. Uh, well, that's bad early. Evening Star is not bad early. It's okay. Anchor Watch is not bad early if you've got the resources to pay for it. That's the caveat with both Evening Star and Anchor Watch. Even Skyward Volley is not bad early. This is bad early. One willpower for two cost is bad. And the second play you get of it, two willpower for two cost, is not that good either. This is not a good card. I don't like it. I do not think that is good. It's very weak. To the sea, to the sea, one cost, attached to a Noldor character. Exhaust to the sea, to the sea, and discard X cards from your hand to reduce the cost of the next Noldor ally played this phase by X to a minimum of one. So we got some Noldor synergies coming in. Well, if you got excess cards to discard, that's a great effect. You're converting your excess cards into resources? Phenomenal. Love it. That's what Arwen does, right? Discard one to gain a resource. This is just uh, a buffed version of that. Discard as many as you want if you're playing Noldor allies. That's great if you're playing Nordal Allies. I'd include it in every deck in which I've got a Noldor hero and I'm playing Noldor Allies. Great card. And and especially being off sphere. Off sphere cards like this are usually over costed. Usually cost reduction goes in leadership. This is in spirit and it's not over costed. It's a fantastic card. If you've got cards to spare. You're running Noldor allies and a Noldor hero. So those are the caveats, but in that situation is very, very strong. Narya, the Ring of Fire. Attached to Serdan, the Shipwright, or Gandalf. Oh, yeah, I forgot in the lore Serdan the Shipwright used to have it. Attached character gains a leadership resource icon. So you can give Gandalf a leadership resource icon. That's Great. Exhaust Narya and attached character to choose and ready up to two allies. 
Each of those allies gets plus one attack and plus one shields till the end of the phase. Okay, so you can make your unexpected courage action this to ready allies and allow them to quest and attack or shield or defend. I think this card is great on Gandalf because it gives him a, a leadership resource icon. And then whatever else you get from it is okay. So Gandalf already quests and attacks for three. I think you'd have to get more than three out of the two allies that you're readying to make this worth it. Even then if you readied, let's say, two, well, you give them plus one attack and plus one shield, so that helps if your intent is to battle or shield with them. If you're, yeah, I mean, the effect is okay. You don't need it every round. You don't, it's not always going to be a huge buff depending on the allies. Because a lot of allies can't make good usage of like quest of willpower and attack. They're usually statted for one or the other. They're not. There's not very even distribution in a lot of allies, and so you're not going to get a lot of use. Although the the battling and shielding helps with that. I think this is a good card. I'd run it with Gandalf. I'd probably run it with Sir Dan as well. I think it's good enough to include in a Gandalf or Sir Dan deck. And that's its only usage, of course, because those are the only two characters it can attach to. Giving them a leadership resource icon, that's the best of the icons if you want to give one to a character. Song of Kings is the most commonly played song, at least for me, due to Steward of Gondor. So that effect alone is worth one card and one resource if you don't have a leadership hero. So this enables you to play a lot of different kinds of decks because you have the ability to give out a leadership resource icon without running Song of Kings. It's good for that reason alone. That's worth one cost and a card. So is the attached character, exhaust attached character to choose and ready up to two allies? Is that worth one resource? readying two allies in exchange for exhausting a hero. And they get plus one attack and plus one shields. I think it is worth it for one resource, but barely. And not always. Though, depending on the allies, it could be. This is a, kind of a tough ability to evaluate for me. But I do think it's good. I think it's worth it, considering what you already get out of the card, which is a leadership resource icon. I think this is a good card. I think it's worthy of inclusion anytime you're including Sir Dan or Gandalf, and considering those are both very strong heroes, that will be often. So it's certainly worthy of inclusion. I don't know that I would buy, if you're like a dedicated Gandalf player, I don't know that I would buy this adventure, this expansion just for that card. But this expansion gives some tools to deal with some nasty challenges. Given that you get Sir Dan, maybe even Galdor, Mariner's Compass, Explorer's Almanac, To the Sea, To the Sea, and Narya, this is a strong expansion. I would recommend it. I think this is a very strong expansion. I think Narya is a good card. It's not a Vilya. I'd, I'd rank it as equivalent to Nenya. But certainly not a Vilya. But I, yeah, I would rank it as equivalent to Nenya. And a similar effect too. Nenya allows Galadriel to quest or give her willpower away while still allowing each ally that enters play to be ready on the turn that it enters. Narya also affects allies by giving them action advantage. Yeah, 
Yeah, good card. Definitely worthy of inclusion in any Sir Dan or Gandalf deck. So, very good expansion. I do recommend it. And I'm looking forward to using the cards. So, thank you for watching.